Eric ITGS Guru here with some more awesome, useful ITGS information. Today we're going to be talking about banking and digital money. Electronic fund transfer, or ETF. Electronic fund transfer is the general name given to any method in which money is moved electronically through computer systems. An automated teller machine, or ATM. On most modern ATMs, the customer is identified by inserting a plastic ATM card with a magnetic strip or a plastic smart card with a chip that contains a unique card number and some security information such as an expiration date or CWV CWC. Authentication is provided by the customer entering a personal identification number or PIN. ATM foreign exchanges. Using an ATM, customers can access their bank accounts in order to make cash withdrawals, debit card cash advances, and check their account balances as well as purchase prepaid mobile phone credit. And the currency being withdrawn from the ATM is different from that which the bank account is denominated. For example, withdrawing Japanese yen from a bank account containing US dollars, the money will be converted at an official wholesale exchange rate. Thus, ATMs often provide one of the best possible official exchange rates for foreign travelers and are also widely used for this purpose. How an ATM works. Now, this is a little bit complicated, but we'll try and simplify it here. You have the card reader, and the card reader captures the account information stored on the magnetic strip on the back of an ATM or debit card or credit card. The host processor uses this information to route the transaction to the cardholder's bank. The keypad. The keypad allows, a, allows the cardholder to tell the bank what kind of transaction is required. Cash withdrawal, balance inquiry, etc. And for what amount. Also, the bank requires the cardholder's personal identification number, or the PIN, for verification. And you enter this on the keypad. Federal law requires that the PIN block be sent to the host processor in encrypted form to prevent hacking and security measures. The speaker. The speaker provides the cardholder with auditory feedback when a key is pressed. The display screen. The display screen prompts a cardholder through each step of the transaction process. Leased line machines commonly use a microcomb or color CRT cathode ray tube display. Dial-up machines commonly use a monochrome or color LCD. Receipt printer. The receipt printer provides the cardholder with a paper receipt of the transaction. The cash dispenser. The heart of the ATM is the safe and cash dispensing mechanism. The entire bottom portion of small ATMs is the safe that contains the cash. Now a little bit more about the cash. They have a bill sensing system which the cash, cash dispensing mechanism has an electric eye that counts each bill as it exits the dispenser. The bill count and all of the information pertaining to a particular transaction is recorded in a journal. The journal information is printed out periodically and a hard copy is maintained by the machine owner for two years. Whenever a cardholder has a dispute about a transaction, he or she can ask for, the, for a journal printout showing the transaction and then contact the host processor. If no one is available to provide the journal printout, the cardholder needs to notify the bank or institution that issued the card and fill out a form that will be faxed to the host processor. It is the host processor's responsibility to resolve the dispute. Besides the electronic eye that counts each bill, the cash dispensing mechanism also has a sensor that evaluates the thickness of each bill. If two bills are stuck together, then instead of being dispensed to the cardholder, they are diverted into a reject bin. Unfortunately, we don't get more money than we deserve. The same thing happens with a bill that is excessively worn, torn, or folded. The number of rejected bills is also recorded so the machine owner can be aware of the quality of bills that are being loaded into the machine. A high reject rate would indicate a problem with the bills or the dispenser mechanism. 
Online banking. <coughs> Most banks now offer online banking facilities where customers can see the status of their accounts as well as perform transactions such as money transfers. Some banks and utility companies offer online bill payment where customers can pay for their electricity, gas, and other utilities without the need to manually transfer money or write a check. Online banking is perfect for those who want 24-7 access to their funds and other bank-related services. Since every transaction is recorded, you can go back months or even years to make sure everything is on the up and up. Even though modern payment systems work well most of the time, mistakes happen. So it is important for consumers to stay on top of their charges. You don't want to accidentally pay $75 for dinner you authorize $50 for on your debit card. Electronic fraud. Credit card fraud, either by using stolen card details online or stolen cars in physical shops, have always been a problem. Credit card details can be stolen by unscrupulous employees when paying for items or even through devices criminals have attached to legitimate ATMs to read the details of inserted cards. And you can reference a previous PowerPoint for that on skimmers that are placed on ATMs. Some more on electronic fraud. The use of electronic fraud is defined as the use of internet services or software with internet access to defraud victims or to otherwise take advantage of them. For example, by stealing personal information which can lead to identity theft. A very common form of internet fraud is a distribution of rogue security software. Internet services can be used to pre present fraudulent solicitations to prospective victims. To conduct fraudulent transactions or to transmit the processes of fraud to financial institutions or to others connected with the scheme. Internet fraud can occur in chat rooms, email, message boards, or on websites. Chip and pin cards, as you'll see in this picture right here. Chip and pin cards try to reduce offline fraud by requiring the card pin to be entered at the point of sale terminal. <coughs> this replaces a cardholder signature which was easily, easily forged as a method used to authenticate the customer as a card owner. Chip and pin technologies also reduce incidents of card cloning as it is much more difficult for criminals to clone a microchip than a magnetic strip found on previous cards. Cards not present, CNP transactions. Reducing online card in what are called cards not present transactions is much harder. Most banks use data mining and artificial intelligence techniques to look for potentially suspicious transactions, such as repeated purchases, purchases at unusual times of the day, or purchases made in foreign countries. Suspicious transactions can be automatically blocked or further investigated, perhaps by calling the customer to verify the transaction. Fraud Reduction When making an online transaction, some credit card schemes redirect the user to their bank's website, requiring them to enter their online banking passwords. This reduces fraud by adding an extra layer of authentication. The chances of these details being stolen in addition to the credit card details is now much lower. Here's a bibliography of some useful sources that were used in making this PowerPoint and then you can reference for some more information. Here at ITGS Guru, we close with Stay Nerdy, my friends.